in this chapter i want to go through how you can apply custom script extensions for a windows virtual machine so if you go on to extensions and applications for an azure vm you can actually add multiple extensions that are available for azure virtual machines so this is like adding another software onto the machine that actually enhances the functionality of the virtual machine itself. Now here, the extension that we are going to work with is something known as a custom script extension. So the custom script extension has a name does imply, allows you to run a custom script on the Azure VM itself. So for example, let's say I want to install Internet Information Services, which is a web server. It's a web server role on the Windows Server 2019 machine. So the way that you actually go about doing this without a custom script extension is to first of all, log into the Azure Virtual Machine. So let me quickly log into the machine using the public IP address. So once you're actually logged into the machine, you have to wait for server manager to actually come up and you also need to wait for a couple of minutes. So here it needs to finish. You can see that there's kind of a progress bar in place. It's just trying to get some information about the server. You have to wait till this is complete. And once server manager has got its relevant information, yeah, if you click on add roles and features when it comes on to configuring the local server, yeah, if I go on to next, if I go on to next, if I go on to next, yeah, you can actually install the web server role that's Internet Information Services. So with this, you'll actually have a web server running on your Windows server machine. Now, you can also do this automatically with the help of a custom script extension. So instead of actually having to log into the machine and install this role, you can run a PowerShell script via the custom script extension. So I'll just close this session. So we can actually use a custom script extension to apply a script. Now, in order to apply a script, we first need to upload that script onto Azure. And that script needs to be in an Azure storage account. We've already seen how to create Azure storage accounts. So let's go ahead and create first an Azure storage account. So here in storage accounts, let me hit on create. Just hide this. Yeah, I'll choose an existing resource group. I'll give a unique storage account name. I'll choose my location has North Europe. Here again in the redundancy, let me choose locally redundant storage. I'll leave everything else as it is. Let me go on to review and create. And let me go ahead and hit on create. Now let's come back once you have the storage account in place. Once you have the storage account in place, I'll go ahead on to the resource. Yeah, then let me go on to containers and let me create a new container. I'll just give the container a name and here in the public access level, I'll specify blob. Let me hit on create. Let me go on to the data container. Let me upload a file. So here I have an IS configuration file. This is in my temp directory. Let me open this. Let me click on upload. If I just go on to the file, this is a PowerShell script file. This is with the extension .ps1. If I click on this, if I go on to edit, so this is a very simple PowerShell script file. This basically is used to install that same web server role, but why the use of PowerShell commands. So we want to run this script now on the Azure virtual machine. So the way that we actually do this is we go on to the Azure virtual machine. So I'll go on to app PM. You can actually go on to extensions again. You can then go on to extensions and applications. You can click on add. Yeah, you choose the custom script extension. You can choose this. 
you can go on to next yeah then you can browse for that script file so you can go on to the storage account go on to the container choose the configuration file and then you can go on to review and create and create the custom script extension this will deploy the extension onto the azure virtual machine now let's see how we can actually do this via terraform because that's what we are trying to achieve we are trying to achieve all of this via a terraform configuration file so before that let me go on to the storage account and let me delete this storage account so i'll hit on delete now let's go on to our terraform configuration file so currently here, I have the Terraform configuration file. I am just going ahead with the same file which I had when it came on to the deployment of a VM that is part of an availability set. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll add the resource blocks for creating a storage account. Yeah, I am actually ensuring that the allow blob public access is marked as true. Then I'm creating a container within the storage account. So again, you can actually make use of variables. You can make use of locals, etc. Yeah, I'm just keeping it simple. I have a depends on clause. And then I am adding my IS config PowerShell script file onto the storage account. So we've already seen this earlier on. We have seen how we can upload files via a Terraform configuration file onto an Azure storage account. Next, we need to add a resource block when it comes on to installing that virtual machine extension. Yeah, we have to give the name of the extension. So what we can do is we can give it as app VM extension. What is the virtual machine ID? So I'm giving what's the name of the ID that we have for our Azure VM. This is in the script itself. Then we have something known as the publisher, which is Microsoft.compute. The type is a custom script extension. Here we have the type, handler version, etc. And this depends upon the blob being in place because we need to have this configuration file in place in order for the virtual machine extension to run. And then if I scroll down here yeah, in these settings, we want to now mention what is the file URI of our is config file now here what i'm doing is i want to reference now so i want to formulate a url so remember when you upload any object onto a container you get a unique url so i want to reference that url now by default when you're using the blob service in an azure storage account for your files the service is dot blob dot co dot windows dot net then we have the name of our container and then we have the name of the file. The only thing that we need now is the name of our storage account. So here now in order to access our storage account, I'm using the resource type. What is the resource name and dot name. But since here we want to embed this now within a string, we can use the dollar parameter here to signify that we want to get a particular value and then this is like a placeholder so we are getting this name and this is now embed this has a properly formatted url or a uri and here i'm giving a command to execute so i'm saying please execute the powershell command on the azure virtual machine and please execute a powershell script file so I'm going into details on to the settings for the custom script extensions. Again, here we are trying to see how to use Terraform configuration to actually apply custom script extensions on an Azure VM. And please know that this publisher and type is and handler is very specific onto Windows machines. For Linux machines, this will be different. So let me go ahead and save all of this. Let's go on to our terminal. I'll just clear the screen. Let's create a plan. So everything seems to be fine. Now, please know that in my temp directory, I do have my is config file in place. 
This is the one we are uploading onto our storage account has a blob. Here, then let me hit on apply. Now, this is going to take time. This might take between five to 10 minutes. So let's come back once this is complete. So once this is complete, if I go on to my Azure VM, here, if I go on to extensions, I can see the extension in place. So what has this extension done? So I said it ran that script and that script was supposed to install internet information services. So now if I go on to the overview for the virtual machine and if I take the public IP address and if I go on to a new tab, here I can see the home page of internet information services. So instead of actually deploying it manually, we deploy it via the use of custom script extension. This is a functionality when it comes onto Azure virtual machines. But here we have seen how we could deploy it via a Terraform configuration file.